Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel once again. Rails helpers are typically a source of confusion for new developers, but also for not that new Rails developers. One of the most questions I get is what kind of code should go into the helpers folder. Today we will answer that question and also we, you will see helpers in action with the help of a little blog application that we will create at the drop of a head. Stay with me. As you may already know, the Rails framework provides lots of helper methods out of the box. Some of them are used for assets, URL generation, for dealing with forms, for sanitization, for formatting, among many others. The purpose of Rails helpers is to extract complicated logic or reusable functionality from your view templates. With the same idea in mind, you are encouraged to do the same. And where should that code live within your application? You guessed it, under App Helpers. If you take a look at the App Helpers directory within a typical Rails application, you would see that there is an application helper module already. That application helper module should contain the helper methods that would be used in most of the templates of your application. Then as soon as you run the scaffold generator, you will see that another module is added to that folder. For example, if you are creating a user resource, then you will see that a user's helper is added to app's helper. In that user's helper module, you will typically put all the helper methods that are only related to the user's resource. If you just paid attention to what I said, I just suggested that you should put the helper methods that should be used across the whole application in the application's helper module, while you should put a specific helper methods in the dedicated resource helper module. Like for example, if you have a user's helper method that should live in the user's helper module. And that's it because I believe that it will be later easier when you're reading the code to guess where your helper methods are. Nowadays, this is only a suggestion so that methods are easier for you to find later when you're reading your code. But in the past, I mean, in previous versions of Rails, this used to be more restrictive. For example, if you define it a post resource and then you created some helper methods within the post helper module, then those helper methods used to be only available in post related templates. Fortunately, at least in my opinion, that's not um, the case anymore. But if you still want to enforce that behavior in your application, you can enable it with this configuration here. Okay, now that you have a solid basis on what helpers are and when should you use them, let's see them in action with this small blog application that we will create in now. Okay, let's create the blog application so that you can see helpers in action. This blog application is going to be very simple. We're just going to have a posts and a authors resource. And then we will also install action text because we will have rich content in the posts. So uh, to do that, let's go first with action test. We will install it by running this command here. And this will install all the, the files needed and JavaScript and also the migration so that we can have action test in the application. Then we will create the author uh, resource with the scaffolding generator. First the author and then the post. And then as you can see here already, that now that we are talking about, sorry, that we are talking about helpers, you have this authors helper module created by the scaffolding generator out of the box and the same for the post helper. So if you are going to put um, helpers related to author, they should be in, in, the, in this file. And then if you are going to create helpers related to posts, they should be here. So let's first run the migrations so that we can put some content there. Start the rail server. And uh, well, uh, 
let's create first an author new alberto at alberto at example.com create author and then let's create a post new post this is going to be yeah the super post and this is the first post I write book, for example and then the author this should be an ID so we I am supposing that the it's going to be the one for the author that we just created yeah it worked so post was successfully created let's start with our first helper which is going to be an application wide helper as you can see here in the blog uh, title you see that it's only blog because it's the rails what's doing is putting here the default name of the application as we can see in the application layout here so what we're going to do is we are going to create a page title helper that we can provide a title title and if we don't provide a title it will default to a default title as we will see in the example so as i said that this will be an application wide helper where should that go you guessed it in the application helper so the application helper is a module that already comes out of the box within your application and it's located here in apps helper application helper as you can see we also have the posts and our authors helper modules here that we will see later in the example so let's go now with application helper and within this helper module we will add a method to display the page title so we will have here a title parameter as an option and if we provide that uh, we want it to be concatenated with the default title and if we don't we just we will just display this uh, I mean the default title so to do that um, I will have here title presence and then the default title which will be um, the rails 7 block for example oh, no then we compact that and we join them together this character good now that we have the, the function as you can see we will have a title if it's present and this rail 7 block if we have both then they will be joined with this if we just have one then it will just default to the, the rail 7 block so let's try that so uh, instead of the default option let's now um, change that to use the page title function we have created and then we will yield a title and in case we provide a title in our template it will be displayed within here so let's go with that um, let's first try that without providing anything uh, in here for example voila as you can see the rail 7 block so and what if product tell us that they want to improve our applications performance in the search engines by including the post title within the page title then when what we can do is just provide the a value here as you can see we define a title so that now we can go to the post show template and by using provide we can provide the post title so to that title variable we set so we would say post title so that we provide the post title to the title variable that we are yielding here 
So with that, whoops, if you refresh, voila, you get the super post title now included within the page title. So great, this is great for a application white helpers, but what if we want to add uh, something for a, a specific resource? For example, author. Instead of showing author one here, what if we want to display that in a different way? Let's imagine that product tell us that they want to have the authors pretty printed with first the name and then they want also to have the uh, email within brackets, for example. And they have to also tell us that they want us to have that uh, kind of pretty printing in many other templates. So as you can see, this is something that fits perfectly for a helper method. What I've seen in some code review is that some people, instead of adding a helper in this case, in this case they add this logic to the module, sorry, to the model. So for example, they would come here to the author model and then they will add here a function, let's say display author. In my opinion, this is wrong because in my opinion, models should be related to model logic and not to view logic. For dealing with view logic, we already have the views and we already have the helper methods that as Rail suggests, they are there in order to extract common functionality that we are reusing in many templates. So we will follow Rails guidelines and instead of creating it here, we will go to the um, author helper and create here a function that we will name, for example, pretty print with pretty print author. We will provide an author here and we will just uh, concatenate the author name with a author email fine with that so now what we will do is here in this template we have a link to render the post so we must have a post partial right here so instead of having the post author here id what i will do is use this function that we just created created to display the post author so if we refresh voila instead of one you now have this helper method displaying the author in a pretty way and that was it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please smash the like button and also please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any further updates. Also, if you have any question or any comment, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And without further ado, hope to see you in my next video. Adios.